Oh, what, what, look at this. We have a crappy app. So this is what I spent the last, I don't know, hour and a half trying to figure out. So, uh, so at Silicon Dojo, I'm trying to do more and more hands-on classes. I'm focusing in on the niche of what Silicon Dojo is doing. And basically what I want to do is I want to create one to three hour blocks of hands-on classes uh, that teach the students uh, particular concepts. Uh, everything from basic coding and programming to data databases to computer vision to artificial intelligence or whatever, right? The cool thing about Python is Python is essentially the super glue uh, of the modern technology world. <clears throat> and so I'm trying to figure out ways I can create hands-on projects for my students uh, to really be able to, to mentally grasp what it is that we're doing. Uh, one of the issues that I'm running into though is a lot of times when you're going to be creating apps to demonstrate things, uh, you think about creating creating web applications, right? Uh, as I've talked about in Python, uh, Python has a uh, web framework, web application framework called Django, uh, which I actually like, to be clear, I actually do like Django now, but it is a bit of a pain in the ass, <laughs> bit of a pain in the ass at, at the very least, right? And so one of the issues I'm thinking about is, okay, how, how can we create a graphical user interface relatively easily so that that I can teach my students essentially how to send requ requests, parse responses, and do something with those responses. So one of the things I was thinking about last night is what about tkinter? So I've thought about tkinter a little bit before. tkinter is a desktop framework. It allows you to create desktop applications uh, for Mac, Windows, uh, Python. It's relatively simple, but it is straightforward and it is simple. And so that's where I have created created this particular crappy app today. Uh, and what this is doing is every second, this is currently pinging uh, CNN.com, and all we're doing now is print, and all we're doing is printing the response. Why this is important is that this allows me to, to submit uh, information for this particular app, you know, it for to do something, uh, and then it's auto updating itself because that's one of the issues you can have with apps is the whole question of how do you how do you deal with auto updates? So when you when you load a page, it will auto load whatever is in the data store, but if what is in the data store changes, how do you get the, uh, the, the what's on the screen to change? And so I figured that out today, and uh, this is pretty cool. So basically, again, this is just pinging CNN.com. The cool part about this is this is then giving us the ping response. As you can see, it's in text. Once something is in text, I can parse it however I want. So I could turn this text and turn it into like an up or a down, or I could turn it into an image or whatever else uh, to show that a site is up or down. Uh, we go over here, we take a look at the tkinter uh, code. Uh, this is literally, this is literally 23 lines of code, right? Uh, so we import uh, uh, tkinter, uh, we import subprocess window. So basically we create the tkinter window. We make the size of the tkinter window, 800 by 800. We make the title of the tkinter window, crappy app, of course. Then text. So this is the text box here, right? This is the text box here. So text, uh, uh, is going to be inside the window. It's going to have a height of 10. It's going to have a width of 30. We're going to create a command of ping hyphen C1. So it'll only ping once. Do remember in the Linux world, if you don't set how many times something will ping, it'll ping forever. So we need the response back. We need to stop. We're going to ping CNN.com because just, that's just how I roll. We're then going to create a function. So command response equals sub process. Uh, check output of command from the shell. We're then going to delete whatever is currently in the text box from, from index 1.0 to the end. We're then going to insert at the end whatever the command response is. We're then going to do this pack. So basically that's where it actually writes it to the screen. And then what we're doing here is we're saying after every 1000 milliseconds or one second, what we're going to do is we're going to repeat. Basically we're going to uh, Oh, make this function fire off. So this allows this to continuously loop, 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 loop. Then in the standard Python, we call the output box, right? So basically we call this 
And then once we have this running, it loops, 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 loops. Then past that, we create a button. Uh, so the, bu the, the button is stop, and the command is window destroy. So basically destroy the window, button.pack. So we actually have to create that button. And then we have the window.main loop. So this is the main loop for all of this to run. And that is what gives us this, right? So I have my little GUI here. I can click stop. And it stops, it destroys the, uh, the thing. Uh, then I can, you know, tell it to run. And now as soon as it runs, it's every second, it's doing that ping command. Uh, so again, this is all very, 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 very simple. Again, it is a crappy app. But what I want to show you, though, is how basically, again, you build... In order to create more complicated projects, you build on all these smaller, smaller concepts, right? So once once I can interact with the operating system, receive a response in a text format, then I can parse against that that response. I, I can uh, I can test for what's in that response. Once I get that response, I can write it to a data store. Once we write it to a data store, we can then read it from a data store, and we can start to do more and more and more complex things. So I think this might be this might be like our default user interface uh, for Silicon Dojo, where we can just very rapidly create different types of these uh, these GUI apps uh, in order to uh, again try to demonstrate demonstrate different concepts in the tech world. This is one of the big things like this. I, I, again, I know this seems really stupid. I know it seems really low level, but I, I th one of the primary things I really wanted to do with Silicon Dojo is the idea of every lesson we should be teaching how to build a project. Again, it may be a crappy app project, it may be a crappy project, it may be a simple project, but the idea, instead of everything being ex esoteric and academic, the idea is how can, we, how can we bring this down back to the concept of that you are actually building a product in order to do something with the idea that you will try to ship that product, right? Uh, you know, a lot of education, it's not simply about... Uh, uh, the the actual uh, the actual uh, skills that you're teaching uh, variables and lists and all that kind of stuff but it's also it's also that mentality right if you have a student with you for a year it's not simply that they understand the material uh, that you've taught them but it's also are they taking away a mentality of I have the mentality to build I talk about intent a lot right uh, as Mike Tyson says everybody has a plan until you get hit in the face. Well, the thing is intent, right? Everybody has a plan until everything goes to hell. It's the intent. If your intent is to ship product, then even if your initial... <laughs> initial attempt of uh, fails miserably, you will keep trying to figure out how to get that product shipped. Uh, on the other hand, if your intent is simply to do what the boss told you, think about this for a second, right? If you have one person and one person, their intent is to get a product shipped and another person, their intent is to follow the boss's instructions and that's it. How far do you think those two people are going to go, right? The person that's only going to follow instructions, they will follow instructions until they get to the end of the instruction and then they're, and they're done. If the boss hasn't told them what to do next, they are done. Whereas if you're one person who's constantly figuring out, I need to figure out how to ship the product, even if they get to the end of the boss's instructions, they'll still f fumble around. They'll still try to figure it out. They'll tr still try to experiment. And then they could go to the boss and they can say, look, I got to the end of your instructions and I wasn't able to complete the task. So therefore, I spent the next two hours and figured out how to clean up the code to actually make a product that we can ship. Um, so anyways, me off of, off of my soapbox. So this is T. Kenter. This is T. Kenter. We will be working with it more. If you like these types of videos, please give us a thumbs up. If you don't like these types of videos, please give us a thumbs up. Share these videos. Comment on these videos. So on and so forth. T. Kenter. A simple, simple, simple way to create GUI apps in Python.